Hello everybody! I'm Melissa of Knitting the Stash, and you can find me just about everywhere as Knitting the Stash, including WordPress uh, and Ravelry, and on YouTube. So since I launched the YouTube channel uh, about a week, week and a half ago, I thought it was about time to introduce myself a little bit more uh, and say uh, a few things about how I got into this, um, the kinds of things I like to knit and spin, and to just give you a kind of general introduction to myself. So. Um, I actually picked up knitting again uh, in 2012. I knit as a kid and never learned how to bind off, so there were a lot of scarves that I knit uh, thanks to my aunt, and uh, they stayed on the needles or I'd pull them out and re-knit them over and over again. Uh, in 2012 I just, um, I had been cross-stitching for years actually, counted cross-stitch and loved the craft, but um, had a small toddler running around at that point and could not uh, keep going with kind of cross stitch plus uh, get a good light for that kind of thing. Uh, so I wanted to pick up something new and uh, knitting was it. Uh, and so I went to the big box store and picked up a couple of uh, regular old needles and a ball of yarn and decided of course that I wasn't going to just learn to knit something and bind off, but that I was going to actually learn how to do entrelac as my first project. So um, I was cleaning out my yarn room today and uh, I found that first project, which I yet did not finish. It's uh, an entrelac scarf. It's almost long enough to be a scarf, really. Uh, it's still on the original needles that I purchased that day. And you know, I look at it and I think it's not so bad. I'll show it to you guys up close here. Uh, and I think to myself, well, someday I should finish that. Um, maybe I will, maybe I won't. Right now, I'm going to roll it back up and put it back in the stash. Um, I'm kind of uh, one of those people that when I start things, I don't always think about uh, choosing the simpler route or starting from point A, I like to kind of just jump in. So when I started spinning a couple years ago, uh, once I learned how to spin, I uh, didn't really know where to get nice braids of beautiful fiber that I saw everywhere. So I decided to buy a lot of raw fleece. <laughs> um, like I said, I don't really start where a lot of, you know, people would recommend that you start. Um, and so you can see behind me, I have a lot of um, different kinds of fleece different breeds of sheep um, that I've acquired and washed and now I store them in these pillowcases. So I turned this one around so that it wouldn't disturb the camera, but a Corydale and some Hog Island, some Icelandic. Um, and so that's part of the stash as I started spinning. Um, I like, as a, as a knitter, I like to knit garments. Um, so sweaters um, and this, this is a sweater I partially designed, I pulled together from a few different designs to kind of do the um, the cool shawl collar and things. Um, you may have seen on the blog I just finished a pair of dance pants for my friend um, Cynthia. So I like garment knitting, I like uh, working with measurements and gauge swatches and trying to figure out <clears throat> how best to fit somebody's body. Um, and once I learned how to do shoulders and turn heels on socks and finished pants that would, you know, go all the way from the waist down to the knees, I mean, I was bitten by the garment bug. So I, I love um, playing around with swatches. Um, this was a swatch for the dance pants. Uh, and one of the things I keep in my stash are all of my swatches from various projects. So I'll show these some of these to you. This was one of the stockinette swatches from the sweater over there. Uh, this was a swatch for a sweater that I was I'm still considering working on. It was with a superwash yarn, so I was really curious to know what it would look like knit up. This is some hemp that I used to make a sweater for uh, my husband Spencer. Uh, and then I also have some gauge swatches in here. This was this is the gauge swatch for that sweater I just showed you. Right. And I also have some some swatches in here that I use for teaching when I teach kids about um, how fiber works. So this is a cotton swatch. And what I typically do is take these swatches in. They're all uh, labeled, and then I uh, 
then I ask the kids to kind of try to guess which fiber is which. And they have a lot of fun kind of squishing the swatches and stretching them and, and thinking about what they might be made of. So I keep my swatches in my stash. Um, and as a garment knitter, I think that swatches are really important because they tell you a lot about the fabric and uh, they're, 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 actually, they're actually really fun to make. So uh, I, was, I was a swatch convert uh, maybe about a year after I started knitting. Um, I do not, I'm not a big fan of making accessories. I do like making socks. Uh, socks just seem to me like incredibly practical objects um, that are fun to knit and you can travel with them. I've been through many an airport for uh, my job with a set of socks on the needles and that sort of helps me survive all the long lines and the waiting. Um, so this is a pair of slip stitch socks that I finished um, while we were traveling uh, this summer uh, in England for, I had a conference and uh, a couple other kind of businessy things over there and worked on these in my spare time. Um, and you can see, I'll show you up close. It's got a nice kind of slip stitch pattern to it. I think you can see that there. Just gives it a little bit of texture. It's kind of fun. So I like doing socks as my travel project. And then the other thing I like to do as a knitter um, is I have a blanket a year project. So, so far I've made this guy, which is the Hue Shift Afghan. It's a Knit Picks pattern. This was kind of before Knit Picks changed their yarn. This is a, um, a kind of, it's a DK uh, acrylic yarn that does not feel acrylic. It's really quite great and it holds up really well. My son has dragged this blanket all over the floor. The dog used to sleep on it. He'd take, drag it over the heating grates and lay on it in the morning and it stood the, the test of time pretty well. And I, I love the colors of it. It's a pretty, it was a pretty wild and ambitious project. Um, but it was also great to travel with because it's a kind of modular knit blanket. Uh, and so I could throw it in my bag and take it with me. And that was great. Um, last year, or the year before last, was this blanket. And this blanket was knit all in one piece, <laughs> if you can believe it. This is the Love Tangle blanket. Another Knit Picks. And this, both of these are Knit Picks. This is actually 100% wool. The Superwash Wool of the Andes, or not Superwash, the Wool of the Andes. So I've never actually washed this blanket. <laughs> um, because washing a wool blanket in a bathtub is not something I want to spend a lot of time doing. Uh, still smells good. <laughs> and it's also been kind of drug around the house a little bit. I uh, love to see the blankets getting used. Uh, and the Blanket a Year project has been one that's, that's kind of fun because it, no matter what I'm working on, uh, the blanket always gives me something in the background that I can come back to. Usually it's a pattern that I kind of learn and memorize and then you know, just like the socks, you can kind of take it with you on the road or wherever you are and, and work on it. Less so if it's a big knit. Um, I have one going right now in the needles uh, and it's a very simple design. The, the main body of it is finished and then it has a, a massive cable border that I'm just about to start. So that's this year's blanket. And next year I have a colorwork blanket all set to go. I'm really pretty excited about it. Um, and I'll pull up the pattern here. So this blanket is uh, another, this one's the Persian Dreams worsted blanket. And I guess I don't have a picture of it in here. Um, but you guys are probably pretty familiar with the Persian Dreams blanket. I printed out all the charts in color. Um, the Persian Dreams blanket is, uh, the first version was knit in fingering weight yarn. And it's these really cool, I think they're octagons of all different color work um, and you make each octagon and then you stitch them together at the end. Um, but the pattern designer um, Jenny's Hope came out with a worsted weight version of that and so I thought well that sounds pretty good. So I have um, caked up all the yarn for that one uh, and I hope to start, usually I start my blankets in October, it's the end of October right now and I haven't quite finished last year's blanket. So uh, hopefully that'll be on the needles soon. And I'm really excited to start doing some color work. Um, I've tried some color work um, in previous years and it's worked out pretty well. Uh, sorry for the crinkling. I was working on a Tannis Fiber Arts 
mitten for a while. It's still in my works in progress. And this was pretty much my first attempt at color work. And it's coming out okay. The, the problem with it and the reason that it's sitting in the bag right now is that um, you can see the floats here. Um, the problem with it is that since it's my first color work, the tension is a little tight. And so while I love it and I want to finish it, I also want to rip it out and do it, do it right for my hand size. So I'm torn about that one. Um, but I'm hoping that the, uh, the blanket gives me a chance to play around with color work a little bit more um, and work on, you know, two, holding two yarns with two hands. Uh, it's that's been a slow process for me. I I love cables and textured knitting, and that feels like home. But when I start to do color work, I I look like I have three left hands. <laughs> so I really I'm, the blanket project I think will be cool because it's a lot of practice with worsted weight yarn, and I think it'll be a fun kind of thing to do. Um, let's see. I just actually I pulled out um, a couple things that I'm working on right now just to give you a sense of me as a knitter. Um, so I like to do socks, but I love wearing knee socks. So I had to eventually figure out how to do them. Um, this is this is the Hippity Hop design, and I'll put it on my arm so that you can see it. Uh, and it's a great cabled sock, knee sock. Um, has a simple um, you know, turned heel with gusset and flap, but it has this great stitch work all the way up and down cabling and it, it stays up on the leg. It's so great. So I have one of those done. The other one is on the needles and I'm past the cuff. So hopefully that'll be done soon in time for winter. I'll have a pair of knee socks. Um, and then as so I told you, I was cleaning out my room today. I went through everything, trying to get rid of all those whips and bags. And there weren't too many of them. Uh, this was one though. Uh, this is uh, actually, it was meant to be a scarf, um, and it's, it's got a great, it was my first, one of my first attempts at lace, and I haven't washed it or blocked it yet, so you can't quite see it, and because I didn't know what I was doing when I first started this, which was a long time ago, like I said, it was whipping a bag, um, I was using a, pretty much a worsted weight, a DK to worsted weight yarn, and so I'm not exactly sure how this will open up when I go to wash it, but it does have some, it's half uh, wool and half silk, so it, I think the drape will come in once I wash it. Um, I decided I wasn't going to finish it as a scarf. <laughs> I'm, I, have bad, I have a bad track record with, with scarves, as you can tell. I'm giving it all away right now. Um, so I pulled it off, I, I cast off, and I decided to just sew it up Frankenstein style, and you can't even, it's really not so bad because the pattern kind of repeats, so you can't see this sew up too much. And it happened to be just the right length for a little winter cowl, which is something I love to wear under my coats. And this will be wool and silk, so it's very soft and it'll be warm. And if I feel like my head is getting cold, <laughs> I can switch it up and put it up on my head. It's like, it's a nice kind of versatile piece. So from languishing whip in a bag to brand new cowl for the winter that worked out. Since I don't usually knit accessories, it's nice to kind of find the accessories, finish them, and then do something with them, right? Um, I hate to have stuff languishing. Um, and so since I was working on lace, uh, I finally feel like I'm a little bit comfortable with lace. Um, I started the um, Waiting for Rain shawl with some Madeline Tosh that I have. Um, and so here are some of those lace panels. And I decided to do it in two tones. So I have a kind of funky gray, and then this blue actually has a lot of the gray in it. I don't know if it's gonna show up so well on the camera. I'll try to bring it over there to show you. But you can kind of see that the blue actually has some gray in it. And you can see the lace work is really gonna pop. This is um, the Madeleine Tosh uh, Twist Light, and so it's a singles yarn. Um, and It'll really make the lace kind of roll open, I think, once it's washed. So that's me kind of in a nutshell. Um, I, as a knitter, I love making fabric, um, which is, I think, why I'm drawn to things like garments and blankets. Um, I'm learning that shawls can be really cool because 
you can make a huge swatch of fabric and play around with different kinds of um, patterns and designs and things like that. So who knows what the future holds, but I love the idea of making different kinds of fabric and seeing how it all turns out. Um, as a spinner, uh, I am <laughs> I have learned so much from, I joined a guild, um, we have a spinners and weavers guild here, and they've been great about teaching me all kinds of different things, uh, lending me tools like the combs you see in the background. Uh, I have a great supportive husband who has built a lot of equipment for me, including things you need for spinning like nitty knotties and uh, lazy kates and even a drum carter, um, which maybe I'll talk about in a future video again. Uh, and so spinning for me is, is a great adventure, <laughs> more so than knitting sometimes, because I really I've uh, been learning along the way and trying to make it a kind of hobby that's um, uh, accessible and something that uh, won't have to cost a lot of money and that's something that you know you can actually just learn about as you go and experiment. Um, and so I'll talk about myself as a spinner probably in a future episode. Um, yeah. Today the, the other thing I wanted to do besides introducing myself and talking about the kinds of projects that um, I'm interested in as a knitter is to talk a little bit about my stash because this is knitting the stash and it's always seemed kind of fitting that uh, part of what we do here, what I talked about and, and what you guys can comment about and maybe have advice about is how do you keep your stash? How do you organize it? Um, how do you kind of turn it over? How do you keep it fresh? Um, how much stash do you have? How much is too much? Right? We've all heard of the the sable like stash acquired beyond life expectancy. I'm pretty sure I'm at that point, um, just with the fleece alone. Um, but I thought I'd talk a little bit about my stash, um, especially because I was just cleaning out my room today. Um, so one thing I, I like to do, I'm one of these um, stash people, and I'll, I'll hold up one of my bins. Um, I keep everything in plastic. I know there are many spinners and knitters out there who are just cringing right now and thinking of all that wool sweating and all that plastic. But for me, the alternative of letting it be out in the air and potentially having bugs and moths and things, it just kind of it creeps me out too much. So I'd rather err on the side of um, keeping things in plastic bags and in plastic bins, usually not both. Um, and in this house, it's kind of okay uh, in the... Winter, it's great because the the house is kind of, it's an old house. So it's very it, there's a lot of airflow, <laughs> even when you don't want it. Drafts they call them, right? Um, and so this room is usually pretty comfortable um, air wise, and I don't you know I've I've had my stash up in this room for years now in plastic buckets, and it's never been the worst for wear. So I'm a big advocate advocate of that kind of thing. I also use plastic bags. I tend to keep them open if possible to kind of let everything breathe. Um, but I do I do believe in the modern convenience of plastic. <laughs> I'm sorry to say it. I'm, I'm like an environmentalist. I care about a lot of things. I care about wool, breathing, and all of that, but I also want my stash to be safe. So this is how I do it. Um, so this bin that I just held up, uh, one of the ways I organize my stash, I'll hold it in my lap for you, uh, is to try to sort uh, sort yarn out, tag things. I try to leave, I'm one of those people that likes to have tags that tell me what something is, where it came from, how many yards it is, etc, etc. A lot of you are like this, right? So this is my hand spun bin. Um, and you can see that I have all kinds of different hand spun in here that's evolved <laughs> over the years. Um, and I also keep all my kind of scraps in here. So from all my sock knitting projects, these are my sock scraps. I think that'll be a blanket someday, maybe not next year, but the year after, hopefully. Um, and I've acquired some uh, minis along the way. Uh, and one of the things I'm very excited about with these minis, these particular minis, uh, is that they're from all different yarn companies. They're all different kinds of yarn, all different um, types of materials, some superwash, um, different companies that I've long wanted to kind of try their yarns out. And so this, I think the minis for me is a, it's going to be a great way to kind of knit swatches, which is what I love to do. Um, knit some swatches, see how the yarn behaves, and then I can kind of play around with it. So the stash is in part a way to uh, kind of store a little bit of research, you know, as I go along and, and keep track of things. Um, and then I do, look, more swatches. I knit swatches of my hand spun sometimes. This was um, uh, a fractal 
spin that I did a while back. It was this yarn, and this is the swatch. So uh, it's fun to kind of play around with hand spun and swatching and things like that. Um, the other way I organize, um, so I organize a lot of my yarn like that. I'll keep different tubs if I have sock yarn, yarn from indie dyers, um, yarn that's more uh, multi-purpose, maybe some super wash, things like that. I'll, I'll try to separate things out, keep everything labeled, always rotating my stash. So I'll spend some time in this room with my buckets, um, maybe once a month, maybe, maybe more if I need some yarn therapy and, uh, you know, take things out, think about what I'm where I am now as a knitter, um, I just de-stashed a lot of uh, yarn that I acquired in the early years of knitting before I really knew what I liked to do and what I was going to do with yarn. Um, and I think that's a great way to keep your stash fresh is go through it, ask yourself, are you going to knit with this in the next year? Is it something that you've had in your stash for more than a year or two or three? Uh, and it's okay to get rid of stuff. Um, I do a lot of my de-stashing through um, some great Facebook groups, so it's <laughs> my husband and, and some of our good friends like to say that the yarn just travels around to new homes, right? No one really owns it, we all just share it. Uh, and I, I'm a believer in that to a certain extent. Um, so I keep my yarn organized like that, and I keep my fiber, sorry for the noise, organized like this. Uh, so this is a bunch of kind of natural wool fiber uh, that I acquired. Actually, somebody else was de-stashing their, a lot of their um, older fiber. Some of this is like 2014, 2015, 2016. Um, and I like to keep it uh, all together in here, just like this. Ideally, so I can see it as I open the bin and, and you know, thinking about what I want to knit or what I want to spin for the day. Um, and one other thing I'd say about stash and kind of keeping stash fresh is that whenever I um, do bring in de-stashed yarn or fiber uh, it never comes up to the yarn room until it's had a good uh, quarantine period downstairs where um, I can be pretty sure that it's moth free. Um, I, like, I'm, I'm just a stickler for these kinds of things. Um, if you leave fiber or yarn uh, in a plastic bag or uh, you know in a tote or something like that for about two weeks. You can check it and see if anything is growing in there. <laughs> um, and about two weeks is enough time. So uh, I like to keep my yarn, new yarn and fiber, newly acquired yarn and fiber in quarantine for a couple of weeks. Uh, then it can come upstairs and join the flock and that's fine. Um, so as far as de stashing goes, um, I was actually pretty happy going through my stash today. I, I didn't feel like I needed to get, get rid of too much stuff. Um, I have been passing some things down to my husband who has just started weaving on a loom we found at, uh, uh, what do you call that? Um, the home builder, not the idea store, the, anyway, like a secondhand store. We picked up a loom, fairly cheap. Uh, and he's been rehabbing it and my guild mates have been coming over and helping him warp it. Uh, and so whenever I have yarn that I'm not as into or yarn that's a little coarser or something that I picked up and I wasn't sure what I was going to end up doing with it, um, he'll often take it and weave with it and he's, he's doing great and that's, it's great. It's a good flow for, <laughs> for the way that yarn goes, fiber goes in our household. Um, so I think that's about it for today. I was really, uh, thinking to myself about this YouTube channel and thinking, gosh, you know, I should probably introduce myself. <laughs> um, so there you have it. Uh, and I hope you all have some great time to yourselves, with your friends, with your guilds, knitting and spinning in the next uh, week or month until I see you again. And thanks for listening. And if you're interested in more information about what I actually do with my stash when I knit or spin, check out the blog at knittingthestash.wordpress.com or come by the YouTube, the rest of the YouTube channel videos and check out um, some DIY instructional stuff, um, particularly for beginning spinners like myself, I, a couple years in, right? Still beginning. That's a good way to think about it. Uh, and so I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening.